Alyssa Weinsimer here. I'm a vocal health educator and the founder of Voice Body Connection. And today we're gonna to be talking about laryngeal massage, okay? So we're at the sound stage of the How to Warm Up video series. And the sound stage for me deals with phonation, which is the fancy word for the vibration of the vocal cords themselves. But I think it's also important when we get to this stage of the game to think about making sure that there's not extra tension in the muscles around the larynx and the vocal cords that would dampen the vibration of your sound, right? So today we're gonna to focus on what's called laryngeal massage. So let's talk about the larynx for a second so you can understand the larynx. The larynx is made up of two cartilages, the thyroid above and the cricoid below. And if you find it on the front of your throat, you're gonna be looking for the Adam's apple or ladies, we have it too, it's called the thyroid notch officially. And as you look for that notch, you'll be able to find the sort of cartilaginous, feels almost bony, but it's not bone, stuff on either side of your throat, right? These two cartilages that are in there are meant to move in relationship to each other, and they're suspended in the throat mostly by muscles. And if those muscles get tight, it's sort of like clamping on a bell, right? It's going to dampen the vibration of the bell. So we don't want those muscles to get tight. Now, a bell is one good metaphor for the larynx, but I actually wanna share another one that I think is really important and helpful for understanding how the larynx can function optimally. So this idea is that your larynx is like the basket of a hot air balloon, okay? So imagine in the basket of a hot air balloon, it's suspended by strings coming up, and then there's actually usually, usually this uh, sort of wooden circle, and then there's more strings coming up from that that go actually up to the balloon itself. So in this metaphor, your head's full of hot air, forgive me, but then there are strings or muscles that come down from there that connect to something called the hyoid bone. Now the hyoid bone's really fun. It's the only bone in your body that is floating. That means that it's not connected to any other bones. So it has muscles coming down to the top of it and more muscles coming down that suspend the larynx in place. Those are like the other strings. Make sense? Okay, cool. So the basket of the hot air balloon or your larynx is in there and just like a hot air balloon basket, it needs some freedom to move around and float, right? If those strings were to get tight, it would pull the basket up towards the hot air balloon. We wouldn't like that. Same thing with our larynx. We want it to sit lower and freer in our throat. So the massage that we're gonna do today is going to encourage that. So here's what we're gonna do. Take your thumb and your first finger, or it could be all of your fingers if that feels more comfortable for you, and bring it to either side of your throat, right up underneath your chin. And then we're gonna gently, but with some pressure, gentle pressure, drag the fingers down along the sides of the larynx, along the sides of the throat, releasing it, encouraging it to release down, right? So just like we said, if those muscles get tight, the root of the tongue muscles and the what are called the strap muscles that strap the larynx into place on either side, if those muscles get tight, it's gonna pull up. So we're encouraging it to release and head down. I'll move my hair so you can see even better. Feel free to lengthen your chin upwards just a little bit as you do this, but make sure you don't overdo it and crunch the back of your neck, right? We wanna be gentle and optimal in our range with this massage and not overdo it, yeah? So that's step one of our laryngeal massage for today. And then here's step two. We're going to take the same configuration with our fingers and we're going to wiggle the larynx side to side. Now, this is a good juncture for me to say that some people have an issue touching the front of their throat and it really doesn't feel good to them. If you're having that type of reaction, if you're experiencing a gag reflex or nausea, then you're not crazy and it's actually pretty normal. And see if you can breathe and see if you can find your way into a gentle version of this exercise because it is indeed useful, right? So take your thumb and your fingers and now second step, we're gonna wiggle it side to side. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and if you've never done this before, you may be really surprised by this ability to move or you may find that your larynx is relatively locked and doesn't move much, right? And mine actually stops moving so much when I speak to you. So we do want some movability of the larynx side to side. So those two motions are basically counteracting the habitual things that happen with our larynx where it pulls up and it gets locked into place, right? We are encouraging it to rest lower and we are encouraging it to be wiggleable. Yes? Cool. 
So here's a couple important things to say about this exercise. I was really excited to put this video on the internet because I think it's really important for us to feel empowered to touch the front of our throat. I think a lot of times in our lives, we are very disconnected from this part of our body and we're having trouble expressing ourselves or we're experiencing vocal fatigue, but we don't know that we can touch this and it's a big mystery to us. So to start untangling it is I think very powerful. However, I want to not only encourage you, but require that you do this exercise on yourself. Don't do this exercise for someone else. It's really important that you have the proprioceptive awareness, it's called, or the kinesthetic awareness for yourself to realize if you're overdoing something or if you're pressing too hard in the region of your carotid artery, right? So it's really important that you do this for yourself so that if you're overdoing it or if it's time to stop, you can do so and you don't have to rely on anyone else to do that. Now, if you were to go to see a licensed speech pathologist, they would be able to do this and even more for you manually on your throat to help you release any tension. And if you're experiencing severe tension here or you've, you are having the intuitive feeling that this would be really helpful for you, then please by all means find a speech pathologist to help you and get in touch with me if you need help finding one. However, I do think it's very valuable that we do this amount of the exercise for ourselves, okay? So if you're experiencing fatigue, it's a good time to do this. If you know that you're locked up in this area of your throat, then it's a good thing to practice once a day. Check in with, right? Maybe even twice a day. So allow yourself to really, really let go and find freedom and ease and become friends with this part of your body, yeah? Okay, let's see, what else do I have to tell you? Oh, I wanted to share with you. So there's also another way that you could deal with this exercise and I'll be right back because I'm gonna grab it. I do also teach people to use a vibrator for their voice. If you're curious about this and want to learn more, you can go to vibrantvoicetechnique.com, but I'll just show you briefly that you could also do this with vibration. It's a really, really nice way to allow yourself to release through here as well, and it can even achieve sort of faster results, right? So just wanted to show you that really quickly as a teaser, and I'll link to a video below this video on YouTube that you can also take a look and understand this exercise more deeply with me and David Lee, the person who came up with Vibrant Voice Technique. But if you don't have a device, if you're in a place where it's not appropriate to use a device, then please do use your hands and get familiar with releasing the muscles around your larynx. Okay, this one's big, so if you have any questions, please do comment below. Like I said, if you need help finding a practitioner to get deeper into what's called circumlaryngeal massage, then let me know. And I hope that this is really helpful for releasing some of the tension on the front of your throat so that you can find better vibration. And I will share with you that this has, of course, been very helpful to me, which is why I am sharing it with you today. So enjoy.